Welcome everyone. This is Quantum Healing with Candace, and it is the 4th of August, 2018. And it's been a while since we've had a show. And the first thing I want to know from people out there is can you see me? Can you hear me? Um, and how is our um, how is our image quality? Because the last time I did this, I had a little bit of problem. So I wanna make sure that that is working out okay so that we can continue going. And let's see, I'm gonna click on my other computer over here. And all right, there we go. Oh my gosh, guess who's watching, Pamela. Oh, Pamela. Crystal and I love you so much. Oh my goodness. Okay, so it looks like we are on. Welcome everyone and welcome Priscilla Lewis who is coming to us all the way from across the pond in Ellsbury, England. And we are going to talk today about modern day spiritualism. Now, I personally didn't know much about spiritualism. And then I had me a visit over at Priscilla's and went to a spiritualist church. And we thought it would be a fun show today to talk about that a little bit. So welcome, welcome. How is um, everything in your hometown right now? It's raining cats and dogs where I am. What's the weather like for you? Just, just so hot, Candace. Again, it's just this unbearable heat that we haven't had in many years. So it's just dealing with that, yeah. But yeah. it's lovely, it's lovely. We can't complain. If I had a pool, I would be next to the pool all day. <laughs> all right, <laughs> well, very, very well. So. Why don't you go ahead and give us a little bit of background about what spiritualism even is and what the heck is a spiritualist church for those of us who haven't heard of it before or don't know what that is. Yes, so I guess there'll be a lot of fascinating facts that will come out today. And I feel like I probably will have to start with a bit of a history lesson. So in the mid 1800s, there was a family called the Fox family especially the Fox sisters. Have you heard of them before? Nope, this is new for me. So I'm sitting at the edge of my chair. Tell us about the Fox sisters. So the Fox sisters started hearing noises in the house and it was like clicks or knocks. And this was in America in Hydesville. I believe that's in New York. So they established a form of communication with the spirit world through um, Knox, and they established it was a intelligent spirit by saying two knocks for a yes, one knock for a no. But then even further, they would say, oh, or they'll do 10 knocks or clicks, and then the spirit would mimic that. Now, part of our religion is science. So they went through various experiments of how this works, how the spirit side communicates. And this raised a great interest within society. You know, what is spiritualism? Does it mean there's life after this life? What happens when we die? And not only that, there was a lot of other people that came forth to say, I'm having similar experiences. I'm hearing noises, I'm being touched. What is happening with all these paranormal stuff happening around me, you know, can we explain that? So very fascinating. And with controlled experiments with science, there was um, through, I guess scientists would set up controlled conditions for them, for the communication. And through an experiment, you would um, con record your findings and you would report back on them. But there was occasions where things just didn't happen. You know, so um, they'd have communication one evening and the next there probably wasn't anything because they said spirit wasn't there to communicate. And Hydesville is very much celebrated within the spiritual field. You know, we celebrate Hydesville as part of our spiritual religion. And I, I don't really like the word religion because I feel it's a way of life. It's just who we are, we're spiritual beings. But later in life, um, the Fox sisters, unfortunately, did come forth. And I believe they said that they made the clicks and the knocks through their knuckles. But nevertheless, it 
helped spiritualism. It boosted us. And, you know, it brought people back into the churches where they belonged, right? So lovely. And even today in our own spiritualist church, you know, our church is full. And it's so lovely to see there's evenings where we panic that we don't have enough chairs to, to sit the people. But, um, yeah, that is, that's the start of modern day spiritualism. And even when you think of back in the day, in the mid 1800s, you still had the witchcraft act in, in play. So if you were found out to be doing things that is supernatural, that the people didn't like, you would be called out to be a witch. Now, I don't know how that applied to the Fox sisters exactly, because I don't think they were affected under the witchcraft act. But later, in later years, um, to skip a bit of history, we had an amazing medium called Helen Duncan. So she was Scottish and she was the last medium to be prosecuted under the um, Witchcraft Act of 1735. And that was her just being um, a medium and she did physical mediumship as well, especially through the wartime era. She helped a lot of people and I guess a lot of people wanted to communicate with those lost um, loved ones who have crossed over in, in the war times. But the thing is, with the um, Witchcraft Act that was still in play, you were only really protected if you were in the Spiritualist National Union here in the UK. Because if you operated within the church, they were able to protect you. And she was warned that if you work outside of the church, that you stand a chance to be prosecuted and you are at risk. But she didn't really take any notice of that because she was working for spirit and she knew it was the right thing to do. So she traveled all around the country, up and down, doing her physical mediumship. And I'll go into that in a little while to explain what that is. But she was, she was eventually prosecuted. And um, she, I think now she has been cleared, her name has been cleared recently. But the Fraudulent Mediums Act um, was taken to the High Court with the SNU. The SNU did step in when that happened. What's they, the SNU? The Spiritual, Spirit, Spiritualist National Union. Okay, got it. Yeah. The Spiritual National Union did step in and they did try and help her. And they did stand up not only for her, but for all of us that are spiritualists, because basically just performing what we believe is natural and a way of life was illegal for many of us. We couldn't perform anywhere that was seen um, not right or not within the church. So, you know, we were seen as charlatans working on the streets, you know, taking people's money. And the Witchcraft Act, through the help of the Spiritual National Union, was taken away. But when you take something away, you have to replace it with something else. So it was replaced with the Fraudulent Mediums Act. And that was 1951. So if you were seen to be a fraudulent medium, then again, you would be prosecuted. But that meant that mediums all over the world was able to practice their mediumship and the communication with spirit freely without the fear of being prosecuted, killed, or thrown into jail. So let me ask a couple questions. Not that I expect you to have an inside, outside, no, all across the world, but how did it compare, you know, with the Salem witch trials and the things that are very famous, you know, in America uh, during the time what was going on in England, was it, was it about the same kind of thing going on in both places at the same time? Did it affect each other? Yeah, well, funny you say that. I was reading about the Salem witches um, last week, and it seemed like, yes, it did affect them as well. But even the Salem witches, um, they're, they're, what they believe in was also passed as a religion. So um, I don't know much about what they believed in or how they practiced, but I believe that they were also um, assisted or helped by becoming a religion themselves and moving yeah. away from being called a witch. Priscilla, you know, you and I had the most amazing opportunity, didn't we, in May? We got to spend some time with beautiful Magenta Pixie. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we were in this quaint little village, and I'm going to forget the name of the woman who lived there. What was her name? And then she 
wasn't she the one who like moved, sailed to America? And then wasn't it Salem? And wasn't, didn't, isn't that how it all started? I, I'm not remembering very well, I'm afraid. Uh, but interesting how all these dots, you know, are together. And Magenta was telling us a little bit about how this woman actually started a lot of this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stateside. Well, I guess if you look back in history, there's a whole lot of things we can discuss. And, you know, we have so much and so many pioneers that have made their footprint and mark within our spiritualist religion from healers to mediums to trans mediums and moving into physical mediumship. You know, it's so vast. And um, the mediums back in the day, they were astonishing, astonishing. Amazing. What's it, astonishing? Astonishing. Yes, amazing. Um, you know, they started practicing at a really young age and they were brilliant and amazing, but they lived in a different time than what we live now as well. So we can't really compare ourselves, even though it does seem like we don't have as many physical mediums or trans mediums now than what we had back then. And it doesn't seem like there are as many powerful mediums now as than what they were back then but time's changing and we have to think about when all those um, popular mediums and, and pioneers were at work was during the war times and through death and violence and people were filling the churches because they wanted to know what's going on yeah so you know another connection we have is we both were at the college of psychic studies in london and you know, before I even got there, you you prepped me for all of those amazing photographs and newspaper articles and things on the wall. You know, you and I didn't even have time to go through and look at, at all of those, but it may be a good time to talk about that right now because I saw some things that I really wondered about. Some of the photos I, I looked at, I thought, you know, I don't care even if they are talking to somebody. I'm not buying that photo. I mean, I, I'm too good with Photoshop to, <laughs> to be fooled by what I think I saw in, in some of those photos. And yet, um, one, of the, one of the newspaper articles and one of the ones that, um, that I know that you had mentioned and that I noticed and read was the one with the hands. Oh, Where, fascinating. Yeah, so tell yeah. everyone about that because okay. that was crazy and I that's part of all of this, right? Yeah, definitely, most definitely. So um, I can't remember who the hand was from, but I know there's a mold of this hand in the uh, college of um, the Arthur Finley College in Stansted. Okay, I've seen this hand and it's quite a big hand. So what happened was um, a spirit person was manifested through physical mediumship, okay? Now, when we talk about physical mediumship, is when someone can go deep enough to basically step out of their body. They're not disconnected completely. They're still them, but they're disconnected enough so that the spirit beings or Rehalem can come into you, okay? And through the... Um, ectoplasm within your body, I think it is held within the liver, can be used and it comes out of any or every hole, okay? It can come out of anywhere. And, <laughs> okay then. <laughs> okay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, so um, the ectoplasm comes out of the medium and through this can manifest a physical person that you would be able to see and recognize as they were when they lived here on the earth plane. Okay, wait, 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 wait a second. Let's slow down here. So the physical medium opened yeah. up one of their bodily holes <laughs> and out of it came ectoplasm, like out of the nose or yeah. as a mouth. Mouth or ears, ears. yeah. Mm. Um, and and a stream of it comes out into space and created this hand. Yes, created, so created a hand. And because the spirit world is so intelligent, they had a um, wax already prepared 
And the spirit person put their hand into the wax and was able to form a physical hand mold from this person who walked the earth plane. And if I remember correctly, and if I'm right um, in my remembering, they did send this mold off because there was actual fingerprints within this mold, which they were able to analyze. I was just going to ask about the fingerprints. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. That's crazy. So, but it was, it was done in a day when I'm, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. kind of thank goodness we're not all fingerprinted yet, but uh, how interesting is that, that they were able to, to get that much detail from ectoplasm? I have a picture here I can show you. Hopefully it comes up on the camera. So basically that is how it will look like. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So normally, in normal conditions, this would be done in the dark and not in daylight. And it is so amazing when in a trance state, in deep physical trance state, that with the same ectoplasm, they can form a trumpet next to the medium. And if, it isn't, if there isn't a physical form, there could be a voice. And through this trumpet, they could um, speak to you as they did in their own voice when they walked on the earth plane. Sometimes so they struggle, sometimes they struggle because they need to remember, they need to remember how to do this. So the trumpet itself is made out of the same stuff that the hand was. Yes, yeah. And when you look at um, a physical seance where you will attend these things, normally the rooms would be really clean because it's like a muslim. It's sticky. It will feel like cloth when you touch it for what I've read. And it will pick up any dirt or anything that's around it. So the normal conditions need to be clean and um, very hygienic as much as possible. And when a medium is in such a high um, state of, you know, when you go into trance, you go into just a, a very, very high, high state of, oh, I forgot the word, but you cannot, it's like when you're, when you're in deep meditation and someone walks into you, you will jolt right now when a when a physical medium is in such a, a sensitive state you cannot disturb the medium in any way because that ectoplasm will bolt back into the body and will leave burns and scars on the medium so i was going to ask that anyway after the ectoplasm comes out and it forms whatever it always goes back into the medium yeah, it does. And so that, that ectoplasm then, it, does that mean it is a part of the medium's physical yeah. form? It's yes. just interesting. So, okay, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm trying not to be flip about this or anything, but, and not that you would know this answer, but so I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to poke holes in this. So if like a trumpet or a hand was there, someone were to come in and like, I don't know, grab that and take yes. it out of the room, yes. what would happen? I mean, what, what's that, what, uh, what, what would that be like? Would it, what would happen to that stuff when you left the room? Well, that's exactly what happened to Helen Duncan when she was, um, it was her physical medium that killed, mediumship that killed her in the end. Not because she was doing physical mediumship, but because people were, the police were busting into the room trying to um, catch her in the act doing fraudulent mediumship. So when they did that, exactly that happened, right? You had these things manifested um, and the police went for her, dashed, tried to catch this Muslim or what they said was like a Muslim. And um, it just went through, through their hands. They couldn't grab hold of it. And as that happened, the ectoplasm moved back into the medium and there was reports of, oh, she, it was a piece of cloth. The cloth was thrown out the window. She must have swallowed the cloth. So um, yeah, it just moves back into the body. But then if you're in um, a physical circle, you will know the risks of the medium 
you'll respect the conditions and the medium and know what can hurt the medium, what is allowed and what's not allowed. Like you can't, no bright lights is allowed, for example, because that will hurt the medium. And because the ectoplasm is from within your body, it's not used to bright light unless accustomed to become um, used to it, used to the white light. But I think we've jumped a few steps. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I got excited <laughs> to ask you these questions. It's just kind of so amazing, some, some yeah. of these stories. So, you know, the interesting thing is, like you said, the police ran in to try to prove fraudulent mediumship. So does that mean if they could grab onto the whatever and it would have been real, then it wouldn't have been fraud, it would have been real mediumship? I mean, how weird is that? They, I mean, it's a very, very strange situation. I know, and it was really difficult for her as well because this all happened during the Second World War and the high courts just didn't have time for cases like this. So even Churchill said, you know, I can't deal with this right now. And she was just jailed. She wow. was, and even though the spiritualist wanted to prove mediumship was within the courts, they said, no, we don't have time for that. We have more important matters at hand. So she didn't even really get a chance to prove herself innocent. All right, so back me up, Priscilla. What did we jump over? Yeah, um, I got excited to asking questions. No, that's okay. Well, okay, so we've gone through the Fox Sisters, and that's really what started the movement into spiritualists. And we've gone through the Witchcraft Act, and where we are now in modern day spiritualism, where we can perform mediumship within our churches. So let's talk about more about what the church is about. Now, even though I don't like the word church, but we are a religion, and um, I know there's a lot of people who find um, religion is a touchy subject, isn't it? And, and, and even a church. But for me, I grew up Christian. And even though the Christian churches were okay, I didn't think it really aligned with what I questioned and believed in. Because what my parents told me, what happened after this life, really just didn't make sense. I just couldn't accept their answers. But even when you look at the spiritualist church, when I went in there for the first time, it didn't feel like a church at all. It just felt so homely and so lovely. And yes, you sing hymns and there's prayers, but that is what religion is about. And it's, it's just amazing how people come together and hear spirit talk through normal people. How, and they've just refined their abilities and worked on their abilities as a medium. And all of us are mediums, all of us. And it's just about practicing and fine tuning that ability. So we have um, a normal spiritualist church would have three services. They'll have a healing service, a mediumship service, and a divine worship service. So a healing service is where you can go and receive spiritual healing. Instead of asking for Kuan Yin or angels, you would just ask for spirit to come in and do the healing. So it would just be spirits working. Yes, maybe other beings would come in as well if you call them in yourself as, as the patient. Yeah, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So spiritual healing. And most churches just work on a do donation, which is amazing, right? You don't have to pay a lot of money. Sorry for all those um, out there that does do um, professional healing. But yeah, for the spiritual, we give spiritual healing and normally it's a small fee or a donation. And the same goes for the mediumship evenings. I want to say clairvoyant because lots of them say clairvoyant evenings, but it's mediumship evenings where you'll have 45 minutes. Those services are normally an hour with notices, prayers and a hymn or two, but you'll have 45 minutes where it's just mediumship, where a medium will stand there and connect with you, connect with your loved ones, and you don't feed the medium, right? You don't feed them any information. So they will just literally come to you and give you all the information that spirit gives them, okay? And how amazing is that? Especially when you have your own experiences, you go to a church and the medium gives you that confirmation. So the same as a healing, you can give a donation and each church is different um, or there could be a small fee. Now, when it comes to divine worship service, which is normally on a Sunday, the only added 
things to the service, these services are normally longer, will be a reading, a reading out of any spiritual book, which is really nice. It could be the Reen Virtue, it could be conversations through God, it could be um, poems, um, mindfulness readings, it could be anything that you feel will inspire the congregation for the week. And then on top of the reading, the medium will give an address on what you've just said, which is philosophy. And philosophy is also a um, major part of our religion to teach about the way of life and us as spiritualists. And it's funny because I go to philosophy class once a month and this week the, um, the person running the class said, please talk about the rising interest rates. I think that was interest rates and make it spiritual. <laughs> So that's what we had to do. <laughs> and it's possible and you can do it. You can take anything and turn it into a spiritual conversation or debate and talk about how we are so much more than what we think and will ever know. You know, that's a, 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 there's a very common uh, saying that the mark of genius is to be able to uh, connect two disparate ideas. and. Those seem like some pretty disparate ideas. I'd be really interested in knowing what it was. But did everybody stand up and say something then in your class? Is that the way that worked? Yes. Yeah, well, all of us spoke um, or did a, did a talk on philosophy on rising interest rate, which was very interesting. <laughs> um, I don't know what's interesting about the rising interest rate, but um, lots of, there was one that did, spirit communication because she has a test coming up and um, she needed to practice and to do that to get certain qualifications because our, our the spiritual national union does have a standard you know we do want to be the voice of spiritualism and we want to set a good example for those who come through our churches so we want good mediums on the platform so we do put them through testing and we do make them practice go to other churches talk about philosophy so um, one person did their mediumship practicing for today, so I hope they passed. And the other person um, did a talk on, on philosophy um, because she will also be tested today. So hers was very specific to also the history and what our religion is really about. That's amazing. But, I, had, um, I had so much fun going with you to the church because you are very active in the church there, aren't you? Yes, yeah, I do chair the odd service and I'm the secretary of the, of the church. So I do have a lot, um, I have a lot of involvement with what's going on and what events to put on and I've input with that. So it is, it's really nice. It's, I love doing it and I would, wouldn't think of not doing it or doing anything else. So um, yes, and the, the divine worship services are free because that is what makes us a church and a religion. So if you ever you feel you don't have a bit of money to give and you need to hear from spirit or from someone in the spirit world, just go and, and see where your nearest spiritualist church is. But it's, it's also important to note that when you walk into um, a church or any medium for that matter, you, it's difficult when someone says, I want to connect with A, B or C because that's not always possible. They could be in a place of healing. They could be not, um, I don't want to say advanced enough, but they might not have the energy to come forth to communicate, but you will get communication and the communication you will receive is exactly what you need. So, and you will take the people that come through, you know, might, might be someone that you're not expecting, but you'll, you'll get what you need. And spirit's always there, which is amazing because they will come through with evidence, with things that you've done recently or, or talked about, or maybe you looked at pictures and the medium would tell that to you and say, oh, well, that person was there while you were doing that, which is incredible. Priscilla, how did you first get interested in all of this? How did this land in your life? Um, well, I've always had an interest in spiritualism. My room was haunted as a child so i guess that was a peaked interest and when i came over to the uk um that didn't go away i've always been interested but i guess moving here just boosted it because i have 
I had unlimited internet resources. I could Google and search and um, educate myself. And that's, that's a big part of, of spiritualism is education and educating yourself that there is more to this life. But how did I come into it? Ghost adventurers. <laughs> I started watching ghost adventurers and um, I started doing ghost hunting, you know, just, and I don't like the word ghost hunting, but it's just going to these really old historic sites and working with the energy there, the spirits there through means of little seances where you'll do table tipping or you'll play with a yes, no board known as the Ouija board. But um, that is where I learned that you don't play around with things that you don't know anything about. And I guess that opened me up to a different world. Um, I love doing that. I went to loads of events, to these um, ghost hunting events. And I soon realized that our loved ones can come through on these events and people that are also stuck. And when I spoke to one of the, these mediums at the event, because there's always a medium, I asked her, oh, are you a medium, right? I'm very enthusiastic. No, I'm a large, she said. <laughs> and uh, did, it's a joke. I'm a large, I'm not a medium. <laughs> okay, I get it now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and I, I just sort of started talking to her and she said, well, anyone can do it if you like. And she sort of said, go find yourself a psychic development circle or... Um, a church circle where you could sit in and that just sort of set me off I went on a hunt for a spiritualist church or a circle and I joined the psychic circle for two years which helped me immensely with my psychic abilities and connecting psychically but that is also where my spiritual journey started with mediumship and through that that circle I found the spiritualist church and that is how I joined the spiritualist church I was there at almost every service and eventually, well, it didn't take me long to become part of the committee because I was so committed. And um, that's how I started in my, on my spiritual development. Um, I still sit in circle. I don't think we ever stop learning where you open up, you learn how to sit in the power of, of spirit. And basically, if anyone who's watching wants to do that, and that is the only thing you really need to become a medium, become psychic, and get to know yourself. Because how can you connect with someone else or give anyone else a message if you don't know your own mind and your own being? So sitting in the power of you in stillness, not with a guided meditation, uh, just still ground yourself and open yourself up and let all your thoughts go. You need to be like almost in a hibernation status, you know, just quiet, feel the energy. You can call in your guides if you like, but just Feel them, feel um, how you are, your mind. I don't know how else to explain it. It's really such a simple exercise. You will start to feel your energy rise. Your energy will quicken as your energetic body starts to increase in vibration as you sit in the power and the connection of spirit. And people would say, Oh, it feels like I'm having a panic attack or my heart's beating out of my chest. But that is, you know, when almost like you have an out of body experience, your etheric body just starts pulsing really quickly. And that is you just feeling your true essence. And when you're in that state, you know, ah, this is the state I need to be in when doing psychic work or communication with spirit. That's so beautiful. Crystal, tell me some of your, some of the favorite things that you ever saw in a spiritualist uh, reading or, you know, during that, that part where the, um, the medium gives messages to others out there. You know, I, I went with you to, to the one service and it was amazing. And I, what I noticed was um, how happy the older people were when the younger people showed up. I noticed that. Um, and everyone was very nice and very kind, but I, you know, it made me wish that I had been able to spend some more time there and go to more services. So I only went to the one, but it makes me wonder about some of your favorite services, what you might've seen or experienced during some of your more memorable ones. Well, when I'm in a 
when I'm on the chair, especially when I'm chairing, it's nice to look out to the congregation because you can sort of see their auras. And as you are observing your audience, you can feel or sense the energy where the media might be going next, which is really fascinating for me. Um, the most, the, the, the evidence that comes through, which is the best kind of evidence, is a medium that can give you exact details. Like, oh, she did, instead of just saying knitting, she did crochet and she did, in, did it in these colors. Or instead of people, um, the medium saying that, oh, I have the month of May, you know, to give more specific details to say, ah, I have the 21st of May for you you know and get the names it's amazing i had a medium the other night who was able to give names exactly and wow you know I, you need to have the clear audience ability to be able to hear hear that so um that, that is very fascinating but even today we were playing around with the carillion um photography which i told you about earlier and with that it's a photography that basically picks up the aura um, and the energy fields around you, but not just that, it sort of monitors the energy and the light around, around you. And this medium, um, Gordon Smith, that was there today, this was a video image of him. While he was doing mediumship, he was saying, I have your father here. And as he was saying that, this spirit energy basically just popped out of this camera. You could just see the full spectrum red next to the medium as he was giving this message, unknowing to him what was happening, um, the spirit manifested right next to him as he was giving the message. On other occasions, you can feel the energy when you're on the platform, where the energy gets really hot and um, you get very emotional. I have had, I've started crying in a service where a message can be so emotional. So it is, it is beautiful. Um, Every, every experience is unique, Candace. You know, you can't, it's difficult to say point to one, you yeah. know, um, because what you get might be just so personal to you and I wouldn't understand why that is. And that is what a medium does when they come to you, right? They don't have a clue what they're talking about. I have to give you this red bat. I don't know what it is, but you should know. Oh, yes, yeah, I remember the red bat. You know, so something like that. For me, um, personally, I never knew my grandmother on my mum's side. I have pictures of her and she is always the person that comes through for a message. She's one of my guides. She's always with me. And she's the one when I need a kick up the bum, she comes through and she will come forward with the message that I need that week or um, not, not specifically every week, but when she feels that upliftment is needed, needed or motivation, she comes through. And the mediums have, for, for example, said that we have such a strong bond and she helped me before I incarnated and was born because she passed long before I was born. And um, she's always with me. And I speak to her because today the lady said, you speak to your grandmother in pictures. I said, yeah, I do. She says, I know. <laughs> She's telling me that, <laughs> which is, is lovely. Yes. Um, so I know so much about my grandmother now more than, I don't want to say, I don't know when she lived, but it's like you get to know the loved ones more when they cross over than when you did when they were on the earth plane. Boy, howdy. Um, I could say that about a couple of people that I've been in communication with. You know, though, some of the more interesting experiences I've had of mediumship wise, as I'm sitting here listening to you talk is, for me, it's like in my dream state, I was thinking about you talking about that you don't even know like about the object. And I actually had a friend and I'm, I'm gonna try to remember what it was, but I had this dream about her brother that had passed and I'm, you know, know my friend very well, didn't know the brother very well, and have this dream about my friend's brother, who I just didn't know really at all, right? And who I'd met maybe, I don't know, 30, 35 years ago, a long time ago, maybe in passing. And I dreamed that he was showing me, I think it was something like a, a purple coffee table, a purple coffee table 
that something, something, and something was on it. And he was so insistent, so insistent. And the next day, I, you know, I contacted my friend. I went, look, I had, you know, dream about your brother. And it was, it was really strange, but he was very insistent about this purple coffee table with, and I don't even remember what the object was, but she just burst into crying because it was so incredibly specific and special mm -hmm. and she knew exactly what uh, it was about. And it was this huge message for her. And she felt very disconnected from, um, because she'd lost him and another member of her family recently. And it was, it was a beautiful thing. But for me, those things are, they, they kind of come out of the blue and they're very rare, but, but it's so strange because I've had more than one of these people who I don't know come to me in my dreams to give me information for people that I do know, but it's not a, it's not a weekly thing for me. This is kind of a, you know, this is, so I know I've got something, right? <laughs> All of us do, all of us do. And you are definitely one of the sensitive ones, definitely. But then, you know, you have all these added things. You have precognition, you have retrocognition, you have the ability to just go in an altered state and do Akashic Records readings. You know, this is all form of communication and um, using your abilities. And we, we use our abilities by seeing, but not seeing with our eyes, but through our third eye. And especially when some people are developing and you say, maybe spirit's talking to you, you're not hearing it with your physical ears, you're hearing it with your etheric ears. Mm -hmm. And then you feel, some people don't have any other senses and they just feel spirit. Mm -hmm. But it's important to note that whenever you have a reading with any medium, it should always be an uplifting one. Spirit will not come with doom and gloom. Yes, I will say you're stuck, but I will also tell you how to move forward should always be uplifting because then you know that you as a medium has done healing and given the message that they needed. So, yeah. so let me ask you, your involvement with uh, modern day spiritualism, how has that helped you in your BQH practitioner world in life and dealing with clients? How, how do those things combine or do they? I think they combine all the time. You know, especially when doing healing or when loved ones come through in our sessions, you know, then I know exactly how to deal with that and, and call the loved one forward. So um, quantum healing definitely in BQH comes, comes to the forefront all, all the time in my mediumship and, and in the spiritual field because it is so vast. When, when I was looking at this Carillion um, photography today, the first thing that went through my mind is, oh my gosh, I need to get this program so I can get it recording when the client is sitting in the couch. So when healing takes place, I want to see it happening. Like how cool would that be? Oh, you know? Amazing, amazing. That'd be so cool. I, I, I want to be devil's advocate here for a second and, and say something that everybody out there who knows me knows I don't really mean. Could you ever turn that off? Yeah. Session? Uh, you could turn off your, your, your connection to the spirit world. You could say, I don't want it right now. Well, um, for our dear friend Pamela, I'm sure it's different. But for all the mediums that I have worked with, yes. We are in control of us. And if spirit is doing things that we don't like, we could say, or put a boundary down and say, please, you can talk to me when I am in the power or I set the intention to work. Otherwise, please do not disturb my day-to-day -day life. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's natural. When they see an, an opportunity to connect, they will jump right in. They will, right? But, you know, imagine, imagine getting a spirit message, which I do all the time, right? It doesn't mean I'm always switched on. But when you do go in a hyper state, which sometimes, you know, we do, um, I can't go up to a random person and say, oh, hey, I've got a spirit being, you know, or a loved one here. And they want to give you this message. I do at work and they all think I'm crazy, but um, it's just, it's just a laugh at work. They're not taking, I'm not taking them seriously at all because 
that they don't believe in that, which is fine. You know, everyone is entitled to believe whatever they believe. But I find it, I find it funny that they watch Star Wars and, and Dirk Gently, the holistic agency, and they don't believe in anything that I do, but they believe it in their own way, which is fine. Um, but okay, devil's advocate, um, can we switch it off? Yes, yeah, yeah. Because I wouldn't want to, my mind working all the time, I don't want to be in that altered state, um, high frequency energy all the time. Um, even though it's nice, it's nice to be up there and you feel energetic when you work up there. You don't, you come back feeling upliftment and energized and it's incredible. So, um, yeah, I would love to live up there all the time, but no, I, I wouldn't want to work all the time. No. So no. when I spent that, that one night, well, I spent actually two oh, nights yeah. at, the, at the college, but yeah. only one night in that giant building all by myself. The second night, at least there was somebody else in the building. Something about that just made it, I don't know. Let's just say I was a little less jumpy. You know, it was really, really interesting because I, as you were talking about the, you know, t turning it off and everything, I remember stand, standing at my bedroom door and before going in, I kind of turned around and I did it silently. I didn't say it out loud, but I basically said, okay, this is my do not disturb sign. Um, <laughs> I need to, I have, I have things I've got to do tomorrow and I need to sleep. And um, I mean, it was just kind of, you know, the party was already starting right outside the door alongside all the crazy pictures and all of those things like the woman with the glasses and, and you know, the, the one you showed me and the all just the crazy mm -hmm. things in that in the amazing place of the College of Psychic Studies. Um, they respected me. They, oh. they respected me. They kept, they didn't stop their party. The party continued, but it <laughs> continued outside my door and it was kind of like being in a dorm room in a busy college dorm where I was you know the nerd trying to sleep and everybody out there was having a party well you set the boundaries right which is great and if everyone can just do that because as I said earlier the spirit world wants to communicate with you they want to make their presence known I'm okay you know so let's make a noise let's make a bang let's touch a or let's blow it in her hair, you know, you'll feel wind coming on your face or something. And that's them. But if you don't like it, please tell them, don't do this, or I'd rather you do to communicate, you know, leave me feathers. And, and you are in control. If, if they scare you in any way, you know, just say, well, please don't do that. That's scary. I don't know what's going on and I don't like it. But, you know, that is why, um, if you overcome the fear of the other side of bad and you know the good and evil and that there is nothing to fear then you'll be in such a better place and you'll know that there's nothing to be scared about so while we were talking there are some people talking about uh possibly there being some online uh mediumship circles uh that's pretty interesting i i didn't know that um it seemed like the, the physical presence might be um, powerful in a mediumship circle, but it looks like some people are trying to do it online. What do you know about that? Um, okay, so I'm in a, in a, in a circle within the, within the church and without, outside the church, actually. But when I go to places like the Arthur Finley College in Stansted, similar to the College of Psychic Studies, you have people coming from all over the world and there's a lot of places in the world that don't agree with mediumship, don't have spiritualist churches. So the only way they can practice is via online. So they get each other's numbers or Skype details and they set an, um, a set time each week to get together and practice the mediumship, which is incredible. I think that's amazing. Um, and I do that as well with my trans mediumship because I don't have a lot of people to practice with. So I do the same with people that I have met in trans circles and we practice online, which is give each other the power, you know, because as you're sitting there, um, I would power you up, give you my energy. So you have enough to go into trance and do communication. So um, until you can do that yourself, it's good to have a bit of a boost. I love that idea. Um, friend Wendy Lou is talking about, 
she said so she basically took the words out of my mouth she said i prefer physical presence but i'll take what i can get yeah living in rural kansas i i feel the i feel the exact same way uh, maybe Wendy, we can get together with Priscilla and do something, something yeah. online like that. It doesn't matter if it's online; it all yeah. works the same. Sure. Well, it's a fascinating story about the College of Psychic Studies because we know that um, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was the president of the college for a few years, and he was also part of a um, a psychic society, and he fully committed himself to becoming a spiritualist and spreading the news of spiritualism during the war, the war times. And that this was the time he started writing, or, or he was writing Sherlock Holmes. So for those of you who don't know Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, he, was Sherlock, he wrote Sherlock Holmes. And one evening when he decided, you know, I need to commit myself fully to my spiritual beliefs, he said, tonight I will be killing someone. And he meant, he meant, I'm killing Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> so he killed off Sherlock Holmes to commit himself fully with the psychic research and his spiritual journey with the College of Psychic Studies. That's a brilliant story. That's just such a great story. I had no idea you had that one up your sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good. I think, you, I think you brought him back to life eventually, but yeah. So what's new what's new in uh, what's coming up new anything new in modern day spiritualism i mean new things running you know coming up other than maybe the Karelian photography thing which you know i had some of the same thoughts when i first started doing um dolores cannon's method and there was a person out there who had um it was one of those um oh what do they call it kickstarting it was a kickstarting fund a project that this person had um, invented. It was like a headband that would measure people's brain waves, um, but you know, without having to be in a laboratory with all the wires and stuff. It was like this portable thing for people like us who are interested in. Well, what brainwave state are you in right now? And I was like, yeah. Oh yeah, man! And I was so excited, and I like sent my money and everything, but it, the the idea never went anywhere. But I just wanted even. I mean, could you imagine seeing some somebody's brainwave state and then seeing what's going on with them and really? Because we kind of only guess right now. I mean, we have we have clues and stuff, but yeah. we. But we don't, but I think some of that's, you know, I am interested in the science and all of this. I'm interested not in the skeptical part of science, but in more in the other side of skepticism, which is see how this actually is what we think it is. And, and like you said before, sometimes spirit's there and sometimes it's not, and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And that's, that's science for you anyway, too, right? So, um, so what's new? What's coming up in the world of spiritualism? Uh, well, science is a big part of it. And I guess the world of spiritualism as we know it is to try and get people more aware, to bring them in. At the moment, we have people leaving the religions and we have all sorts of religions in our church um, where they have stepped away from what they believed in. If, if that sounds correct. But um, as you said, the science part is about repeating an experiment. And when you see a different medium at every service standing on the platform giving messages, it's about what different information do you get or do you get the same information? Do they correlate with what you know? Okay. Um, where are we moving to? I feel like with the acceleration that's happening within all of us, we are becoming more aware. We know that, right? A lot of us know that. We are becoming more sensitive. So we are getting younger bodies in the church questioning what's going on, okay? Which is lovely because we have people here that are experienced enough to be able to help and educate them. And a lot of them do turn up in, on our circles wanting to develop because we are, why don't you want to know who you truly are in essence? Yeah. Once you have that question of who we are, how can you not investigate it? Yeah. And, as I, and, and as I said earlier, a lot of us have a fear of death, right? How many of us have that? And to know that you'll be okay is, is such a big step. 
I feel like we have gone backwards with regards to the quality of mediumship and we need to get that back. I feel like we don't have as many trans mediums or physical mediums anymore. But then we have to ask the question, do we really need that? Um, it's a difficult, difficult question. I said, I, I have come to a point for myself where I have done the psychic work and it's like a, a journey, right? I've done the mediumship and I ask myself the same question. I kind of read every book. I've, I, if I pick up a new book, it's like, it's nothing new for me. Like I need new challenges and new ideas to push boundaries. And that is when I stumbled into trance and it took me a while to think, okay, maybe I should go into trance mediumship, which um, I really like to think that you can connect to um, a spirit person who'd be able to give you um, inspiration and maybe talk through you. Um, like, like who do we have? Cryon, Bashar, one of my two favorites. Um, that, that's amazing. But you don't, you don't typically get galactic beings talk through you. It would, would mainly be a normal person. I guess those are special um, people in the sense that they were lucky enough to be able to bring forth or were vibrational match. You know, Bashar or Daryl was a vibrational match for this amazing message to come through and it was meant to be. But we, we continue with our healing work. We continue awakening by spreading the message of spiritualism and educating. We're a teaching church. So if people come in, then we're there to teach and show them the way. But with, with, you know, to compare that with quantum healing as well, how many times do you have a quantum healing session, or beyond quantum healing session, which you just brought out, which is such a, an amazing modality. And, um, they, they, have, they already have the spiritual interest. They're so spiritually aware. So it's, I can help them. I can help them as well and give them techniques. And I can do that with Beyond Quantum Healing and assist them. So, yeah. Beautiful. All right. Well, we're getting down to probably the end of our time together. But I do want to ask you just a couple more questions because, okay. um, because I, I've, I've watched... I've watched you really blossom, you know, these last few months. Um, and, and some of your connection with our mutual, wonderful friend, Pamela Erilyn, when you're assisting her uh, during her mediumship, um, what's that like for you as a budding medium? Um, I know that when I was around Pamela, it was, um, it was very informing to me in my own psychic development and in my own mediumship skills. And you've hosted her, you know, multiple times now on, on some of her uh, Patreon uh, shows and, and, and classes. Talk to me a little bit about what that's been like and how that's been for you internally in your own mediumship. I, I can see how she works and personally, by asking the questions, it's almost like I can have a personal communication with the communicator. And it's, um, I have a story there because the first session that I facilitated was Archangel Raphael. And I was, I was, I was sort of, sort of attuning myself because through before a session, may it be, mediumship, quantum healing, or with Pamela's, I would have quiet time beforehand and I would set an intention. And this time I was on my way home on the train and I was looking up in the sky and I was just seeing the sun and um, I looked at it as, as, a, as a halo, right? As an, as an angel energy, um, the sun being so bright. But I didn't think anything of it. I was just looking at it and it was penetrating my third eye. And when I got home, my Xbox switched on all by itself. And if you look at the, at the sign of the Xbox, it's a green sign. And I don't know if the Archangel energy of Raphael is green, but it has a green cross uh, uh, um, across the, the Xbox sign. And then when the disc popped out, it was halo. So that was like, 
Wow. Wow. That's just incredible. But um, I, I absolutely love facilitating for Pamela. I don't know if, if she feels like, I think, I think she thinks I'm a good facilitator. I, I enjoy it so thoroughly that I'd be able to do it all the time. You know, I enjoy watching her bring forth these amazing communications and so naturally, um, almost with no effort. And she's an inspiration to me. You know, I can just, I want to be like that one day, you know, just, I want to be on that platform and I want to give mediumship like every other medium and, and, but I'm still practicing and I do mediumship readings myself and, um, it's, it's really an honor to do that. Yeah. I'm you getting a huge tone in my ear right now. <laughs> I think maybe, maybe that's confirmation for, for mm -hmm. you and maybe, maybe for me both, you know, uh, that, time that I spent with her uh, right when Stephen Hawking had had passed mm -hmm. and I was there for her kind of impromptu channeling of him that just kind of changed everything for me watching just just kind of being in Pamela Erland's kitchen and uh, you know hanging out with her just doing daily things mm -hmm. uh, it, it was it was astonishing it was eye-opening it was such a gift mm -hmm. uh, you know, those of us in the metaphysical community um, are so lucky to have her. And for those of you out there, anybody who might be watching this video who don't know about Pamela Erilyn, um, check her out. She's uh, like my friend Michelle Walling said before I even knew who Pamela was. She's the real deal. And she's, <laughs> she, she's the real deal and all that and more. And uh, an amazing, um, inspirational um, human whom I adore just so much and I just love watching you with her there's something about you that just glows when uh, when you're assisting her so uh, uh, I hope that that continues and it's amazing that she's now also doing mentorship programs because there's there's just so much more than just going for a reading you know you have all the answers within you and she teaches that as well and you do you do have all the answers in you you really do. All right, well, Crystal, I think we've come to the end of our time today. Why don't you tell people how to get a hold of you um, in case they may be interested in a mediumship reading or maybe a BQH session? Yes, either or both. Um, you can find all the information you need on ChriscillaLewis.com. And my name, oh, my name's a complicated one, but it's, <laughs> but I'm sure you'll find it. I'm sure Candace will tag me in the post. And um, it's my first and last name, dot .com. Easy, easy. Yeah. I guess I kept it easy. Yep. Oh, yeah. And if you can't find her there, of course, you can find her on quantumhealers.com. You can find her very easily. Yes. And, um, yeah. and for those of you who are interested, please know we're still uh, offering the BQH course out there online. And you can take it during your own free time it's completely online and take it as you would like and it fits into your schedule okay Priscilla. well thanks for joining me on this sunday you know what it stopped raining since we've been talking that's uh, good yeah that's good. maybe we can step outside a little bit enjoy a little bit of this day we've been inside but up. oh there goes my tone again okay, you can. <laughs> getting, a, getting a lot of upgrades here it's been so nice spending this time with you. I love you so much. I love you too, Candice. And I love you, Pamela, if you're watching. Yeah, so, and all of our BQH community too, but yes, yeah. Pamela. I didn't mean to speak over you. No, no, it's fine. I guess we've touched a lot of, you know, small areas because uh, it's such a vast subject, but thank you for having me. Sure, well, we'll do this again for sure. All right. Thanks all you Facebook people and other people who are catching this on the recording. And I want to say a very special thank you to my friend Greg Prescott at in5d.com who sponsors this show, Quantum Healing with Candace. Love you, Greg. Thank you so much. All right. Bye-bye, everyone. Till next time. Bye. Bye.